right, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. There are a few amendments already. Um, one part of it is that the, under the first item that the um, municipal tax rate information will change um, when we talk about that one. And then under the executive session, we have to add two other personnel matters. And we have to add an addition, which we'll put at the bottom. We'll put it right after the legislative changes, uh, localized option tax, which is, um, there's a, uh, is it just one? Liquor license. Yeah, one yeah. liquor license for babes. Catering permit, I think it is, because it's going to be outside. Uh, catering. catering, I guess, yeah. Like catering slash liquor permit. You know, they want yeah. to serve alcohol Parking. outside. <laughs> so those are some of the, anything else that anybody wants to add or? Oh, Paul, I do have your update on Emmerich, but I figured I'd just do it under the town manager's okay. report. Sure. He sent Sounds me an good. email. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So unless there's anything else, just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we do not have any appointments this evening, so we'll just start off with public comment. So if there's anybody that would like to comment about whatever, now is your time. There's two people in person. And one person out oh, on. Lenny's waving. Lenny's waving. Hey, go, Lenny. Just a reminder that this weekend is our Pride event, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday night, they're doing gay trivia at Babes. Friday night, we're showing the movie Rustin and providing something to eat. And then we're going to have a discussion afterwards. And Saturday, there's a whole day of events. And you can just go to uh, the website or Bethel Pride Fest on either Facebook or Instagram. And you can get a, a list of everything and the dates and times that they're happening. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lenny. Hope to see somebody, some of you there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Alex, we're just on the uh, public comment piece of it. So, if there's any public comment, I don't know if you had anything or. Okay. Anybody else? Ellie, quiet. Good. There you go. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> So hearing nothing else, nobody else online, so we will close public comment and we'll move forward. Uh, the first is to uh, set the municipal tax rate. So this is based upon the town meeting day and then um, uh, based on what was voted in or not voted in and then um, the grand list, sure enough, the grand list provides the, uh, the official tax rate, so. So the tax rate I had provided you with prior to today was 1.3145, an increase of 10.92%. But Rick Benson came in today and said there was a change for Green Mountain Power. So once we readjusted, that changes your municipal grand list and um, numbers and homestead non-res. So we changed that so it actually dropped it. So it's 1.3030 which is an increase of 9.95% over last year. And we'd expected about a 9% increase approximately anyways. So um, there you go. The local agreement rate, just to explain that, the local agreement rate is say, for example, like we waive the, um, we vote every five years to not charge the Grange. Um, the Grange. So we, but we still, because we vote that as a local vote, we still have to pay the school tax to the state of Vermont. Same thing with veterans exemptions. You have $40,000 a year veterans exemption and for certain individuals. So uh, we still have to pay the school tax to the state of Vermont. So when I calculate the local agreement rate in this case, I just use the same numbers last year because I won't know for sure until um, all the veterans exemptions are downloaded from the state. So, but it's usually right around that 0 .0038, 0 .0040, like something like that. So, and the state has not set the tax rate yet uh, for the school. So I don't know what the school tax rate is yet. And you can see at the bottom, our CLA is up because we appealed it. Um, so that changed our CLA a little bit, so. 
So those are the numbers. All right. Any further discussion on it? No. So just need a motion to approve to set the municipal tax rate for fiscal year July 2024 to June 2025 to uh, $1.3068. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Could have been lower. <laughs> Um, and then discussion regarding the riverbank erosion on Graham Street. We started that discussion last time. So you still have the same, you know, the same pictures. I think everybody was going to go out and walk it and kind of see what we're talking about. I think I'd use this map, showed people about 240 feet. You guys all have this yeah. from your last yeah. packet. So did everybody get it? Did you get a chance, Jordan? I know everybody else went out. Did you get a chance to go scope it out? Or can you, you just saw the pictures at least? Okay, good. You can also see it from the bridge too. Yep. I oh. noticed that uh, this weekend. I walked over the bridge. You could see kind of out in the corner left. Uh, yeah. Too. So it's, um. so anyway, so we just have to, you know, I'm not sure what, obviously repairing it is, it's not a, no, no, no. not a, Fiscal like, conservative option. Did, well, did Morgan get a chance to go look at the possibility of plowing that road? The no. Other end, the other end of Graham Street? Nope, I forgot to talk to him about it. Because okay. I don't remember I, when did I talked to you. Dave? Which side? Okay. You coming up from? Yeah, the lower coming up the other side. So because uh, I, if you close it, you're going to have to plow up and then turn around, come back, and then plow down, turn around, and go up. Mm -hmm. On Louis, because there's somebody on both ends. Yeah, he said he could turn around at Borchers at Marks if you're coming that way. Coming that way, that's right. easy. And the other part mm -hmm. is, I think that well, Pam was saying right that oh that they did plow to Louis, right, and then they turned around. That's what she told you and I. And they, they don't normally to plow go down from the hill. Marks over to Louis and then mm -hmm. turned around. Yeah. But it's been a long time. I don't remember the last time they plowed that hill. No, she said she saw someone coming down there once and it was kind of someone that was new and they weren't supposed to be plowing. But normally we don't. And we don't yeah. have to because we could do the same thing that we do on Thayer, which is say, you know, no, or uh, not Thayer, excuse me, Ringe, that it's just, you know, not safe. We don't put somebody up there. Mm -hmm. But um, that's certainly, so I can ask him. I, I'm sorry, yeah, I totally forgot to ask him. I mean, I, I'm, if they were to say no, I wouldn't fight him because I wouldn't plow it with my pickup. You wouldn't? I, I would if I would be down there every two inches. So what you're saying is we could do it with a smaller truck, like you're the one we do rabbit hollow. You're not put a big truck up there. Yeah. It's going to have to be either the one tons or a pickup. Yeah, Dylan yeah. or something like that. Okay. So we could do it with something yeah, smaller. Yeah, he does East Street a lot of times anyway. Yeah. So, he can so you're talking about doing both ends and having to turn around and yeah. come back out yeah. and leaving yeah. this section untouched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we, if we choose to throw it up. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. could also, yeah. you know, there was some trees you know, that Mark had, Boacher had said he would be open to the idea of us coming further onto his yeah. land. There was a couple of trees he showed Chris and I where we could, you know, put the road through there. But uh, I think it was Dave Eddy who was saying, you know, it's, it, that buys <coughs> us time, but really that road's just gonna continue to continue erode. To yeah. yeah, so you could. So if you, if you throw up that section though, then that erosion section part of it, factor of it becomes the property owner's problem yep right basically mm -hmm. and, how, and he owns that property anyway yeah yeah but this doesn't you, you the right. state owns a piece right. of that too well not but this if it part, continues the state's, to erode I think it's over here I thought the state owned like this right here I think that Down I had one bank. of the property tax map let me see I can do E9 that, the, that uh, state owns like let me yeah, do right E911 right. right. hang on we're talking about the road yeah, yeah. yeah. But Paul's saying if it came back close enough to his house, would it become a state problem that the state has to stop this river from doing what it's doing? No, they're going to let it go, and it's just going to continue to so That's what I mean. Who, whose responsibility is it at that point? Well, it becomes, I mean, if he wants to save his property, yeah. then it's going to be him if he wants well, to. If you have a, if you still have a road there, it'd become our issue still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, yeah. if we just shifted yeah. the road a little bit closer to his house and there's erosion, the we'd still be, Yeah. So. you know, that's our that structure. Place. Huge that piece goes all the way around his house the other way. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think um, you can move. I'm not going to look 
well, I'm a dirt around. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't believe passing the trouble on to somebody else. And I think most of that occurred no during the Irene event. Piece. You're not going to stabilize that bank. No. And Mark is here. He owns it all. I mean, he owns it all. He owns yeah. that. He owns this yeah. little piece right here by the river. Mm -hmm. Parcels. But that's not what we wrote. I'll show you a picture of No. It. The erosion is. Parcels. Right here. Right yeah. So the state's not. So we're going to go here. And and yeah, right there. But it's oh, not that far. Hang on. Oh, this is touchy, huh? Yeah, it's but the one well, you want that's not a touch screen, huh? It is, but it is? Uh-huh. There we go. Okay. So you can see. So yep, there's a little That's the states. So the here's state Mark. Well here's right? Mark's right here. So this is Mark's property, two twenty six. Yeah. So and whose right. little sliver is that? That's that's probably this, 350. This. Yeah. So he would have a small sliver, but most of that is state yeah. boundary. Because this is um, yeah. So so a small sliver of that would be his, but most of that is the state. Because this looks like because right here is his property line. Basically, this is the the state's goes like this. That's right, state. Much there. Well, over his his right property there. is this little sliver Because Mark's 226. And then but the next property starts over here. If you, so well, here's, because road see, road this road is road Mark's road right road here. Road Mark's road road parcel road comes out. Right. You can see he goes all the way to the river right here. Yeah. So. So is the erosion Mark's or the state? <clears throat> I think it's a little bit of both because yeah. Mark's, Mark has a piece of it. I mean, that whole bank is, you know. Stinks. So do we have to get them involved at all? Um, if you were going to discontinue, then yeah, we would have to serve note, you know, give notice to everybody and let them know what you're going to do. Because um, across from his driveway is where the state owns it. <clears throat> yeah. That's where it's the worst. Right, and then, but even that whole, you know, the whole section. So you, you have a couple options. I can certainly, since I forgot to ask Morgan about going out and you know, plowing that. I could also reach out to the state and see where they are with it. And maybe we just, um, I could go to the state and just say, look, you know what, what do you get someone out there from the state to come take a peek at it so we can get more advice. It's not like we got to act on it yeah. today. The other thing you may want to do just so that we have all the options is what would the cost be if we were to move the road? You know, is that cost make it up $20,000 or whatever it is to, to redefine the road here. Yeah, it depends that. how many feet, because I think we did yeah, the math, and it's like 200 and, what was it, 220, 225,000 per mile. What I would think be the cost on that, and what would be the, you know, time spent doing maintenance how difference, or, you, or, you know. Year after 20 year. feet, remove 50 feet. Right, well, he was only offering for us to come a little ways off, you know, onto his property. Right. That's so. the thing is, like, kind of what and Dave was saying, for the mountain, he's going to move it. You're not really moving the road much. And, and if you move the road, there was talks of water supply being part of that deal. Right, or? which is not going to work yeah. out. Because yeah. right now, we can't even add anyone yeah. to the right. water system so because of the current, our yeah. sanitary the survey. I understood it, that was like, Part of well, he, he, it was one of his ideas, but it's not like hinging on that because right now with the sanitary survey, we can't add anyone to our water system anyway. So, so I can reach out to State of Vermont, see if Morgan can plow up there, <clears throat> get a cost to move the road to where Mark, um, to, and see. Get but again, when we were up there looking, I mean, if we move the road, we're only moving it like. <clears throat> You know, 10, 15 feet. You know, yeah. so I mean, it's, that won't take yeah. long for it to road 10 or 15 be, more feet on that. Taking out that tree that it's right on the corner, probably. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, there was a couple of trees that he there's wanted us to There's two pines right through. there, yeah. He wanted yeah. us to drive in between them. Mm. Well, so. there's one right on that corner. You can see it right yep. next to the road. <laughs> What's that address? What's his address? His address yeah. is 226 Graham Street, I think, or is he 350? <laughs> Oh, I think, no, he's 350. He's not 49. That's a mistake. He's 350, Graham. Um, 226 is Louie. Yeah, 256 is Louie. Yeah, 350 is him. 350. So, okay, we go, I'll talk to Morgan. We'll get an estimate for the road, and we'll, and I'll talk to the state and see, get a little more information, and then maybe pick it up the end of July or something.
Well, he, well, according to my map, he owns all of that eroded, eroded area. Yeah, I was looking at Louis. 226 is Louis, so 350 is Mark. But we could also see, because Mark did say that years ago, I guess it was Del Cloud and someone from the state went out and talked to him about relocating the road, and then they, he never heard from him again. So, so we can now I'll get a little more information and see what's what, and add it to a future agenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. So sometimes all the roads were. All right. Any more discussion on? Graham Street. So have we blocked that off? Is that? Yes. <coughs> blocks on the yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 30th audit. <clears throat> yep, so let's see. So this is what we do every year. We sign their engagement letter, which they talk about what they're responsible for and not responsible for and what the fee is and sort of stuff. So. You two-sided me on the uh, printout, by the oh, way. Oh, I know. I did, I did Ooh, You don't mess with me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. Two-sided it. Oh, sorry about that. I actually did it on purpose, so. Well, at first I was wondering why the packet was really thin. Was yeah. like, <laughs> That's why I was, like, trying to throw you off. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not sure if we're going to need a single audit this year. If we need a single audit because of FEMA, you spend over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Aren't you going to need a FEMA audit? Well, if you spend over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a fiscal year, then um, then it will trigger a single audit, which is not that price is not included in here. Which what's the price on a single audit? The single was twenty six five. Um, or no, excuse me, a single audit, I'm sorry, will range I, eight to 10 grand. I would imagine it's probably gonna- I would think that. so, just because federal highways alone was, you know- We were over a over million. million. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, sometimes you, it's lucky, it depends where it breaks, but because it flooded right yeah. in July at the very beginning of our fiscal year, it, it saved us from last year, but it's probably gonna mm -hmm. come for this year. So um, if you don't- So would that be something we'll have to ask them to add or? Yep, or they'll be, they ask, so Trees, do you think you need a single audit? And I'm gonna be, yep, and he's gonna be like, damn it. And then he's gonna say, you know, and then it's extra. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things you don't know from year to year. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Yep. So there's two copies for you guys to sign if you make a motion to approve it. Anybody have any issues with the audit request? I get so tense having to read 50 pages of legalese. I, know. I get confused, like, what am I reading? I mean, after a while, blah, blah, blah. I think in a boiler. Well, we will like, do this job for you for yeah. this. I think in I, a, do, I can do that. In a yeah. sentence, they're basically saying it's not a forensic audit. Mm -hmm. So we find what we find. And, and if there's anything wrong, you're to blame. Yeah, and if you don't cooperate, you know, they, that sort of thing they'll mm. tell you about. But, but that's, I think that's their key point, is they follow oh, the yeah, I, I, but I, not a I, get, I get it. I just don't like it. I know. It's, it's you know, it's one of those CYA things, <clears throat> Dave. Both okay. right. <laughs> I grew up in the world where you could shake a man's hand and you were done. Do we all have to sign that? Yes. Okay, so we just need a motion to approve Sullivan Powers engagement letter for the June 30th, 2024 audit. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So there's <clears throat> this one and the same one right behind it. Two of them? Yep. Our copy and their copy. <laughs> This yours? Maybe. I get extra pages all of a sudden. <laughs> could have been. Like, Where'd that come yeah, from? Yeah, I must have said it. Yeah, yeah. it was the okay. thing. Okay. Going that way. I didn't use it on the one. Mm -hmm. 
tell if it was raining again or what. It sounded like it was raining, but not that we need any more water. We opened up the roof today. Beautiful this morning, five o'clock. It was on again, off again, nice. And then it really came down. So. Cool. I mean, somebody, I don't know where they are, where they live, but they got four inches of rain this afternoon. Thank you. I don't think we got that. All right. Okay. We got a lot. And we have the, there's a few different legislative changes in regards to the local option, taxes, open meeting law, uh, tax sale, and tax abatement. So. A whole bunch of stuff. So um, it's funny, Joanne Marshall had mentioned this uh, at some point too, was saying, you know, Trees, we should look at a local option tax. And then it was just so happened that the state made some changes to it. Um, and they're, I think they're, you can choose to prove all three, none, or any combination of local option taxes. And it sounds like um, <clears throat> that, um, okay, and it says the bill removes the $15 penalty from property tax credit, which is a good thing. And um, <clears throat> so there's a couple other things that kind of clarify that that's nice. but. One of the things I think there's a reason that they were suggesting, the 1% is with short-term rentals present in nearly every Vermont municipality, a new revenue source now exists to address local needs without lightening residents' pocketbooks. So one of the things about this is, believe it or not, the, actually the state collects it and then sends it to us. Because you know, we collect state tax and usually we're doing all, all these things. They collect. they collect and send to us. So, um, so it's definitely something to think about because, um, and, and like they said, you can do sales tax, uh, you can do or meals tax, alcoholic beverage tax, room tax, so you can do a combination. And if you wanted to, you know, for short-term rentals, um, I think what their point is maybe you're targeting more non-residents. So. They're just in and out. Do we, have, do we know how many short-term rental units? Maybe we keep we actually, track of any of that? Well, people that have short-term rentals or that open them up after the new zoning regs are supposed to have zoning permits. But it's very easy to find because if you just go on Airbnb or VRBO, all the ones in, you know, but then Bethel pop up. So I don't think there's. But the state, I think there's more. Does the state have a record of it? For they may for because. I mean, how do they determine how many? You know. There are in Bethel. Yeah, for, I, my understanding is when they well when they first started, I know that you had to register through the Vermont Department of Health. Mm -hmm. So whether or not they still track it, I don't know. But um, we had made a zoning requirement for it, and then um, you know people still obviously don't adhere to that. But you can find them on VRBO and other places. But once I know if you go through like Airbnb, they collect all those fees for you and. And stuff. So it's it's something. Well, how that would we do that? I mean, somebody would have to sit and and create this list. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and you would just have to, you know, obviously we would go through the process. We'd send out a notice so everybody would know that the town had adopted this, and so yeah, that if you're one percent or whatever. Yeah, you know, and then and the state knows. So then the state, when they do the insurance, the tax forms, the state's going to say, "Oh, you live in Bethel." you better be collecting your other 1% local option tax. So obviously, so you, you can't tax uh, cannabis, but it does obviously allow you to tax, you know, alcohol. Yeah, and you can't tax, like, new and new uh, vehicles. So right. That's, that's done with more vehicles. Right. So. But this, this is something we can't, we can decide to put this before the town. We can't decide this. Right. Uh, it has to be quoted on by the No, it'd be put right. on a warning. It'd be yeah. put on the yeah. warning, but yeah. it, it's yeah. something to think about for sure. I mean, yeah. let's face it, we're always looking for, um, you know, nobody wants their property taxes to go up, and municipalities have very limited um, option for, um, you know, non-tax, non-municipal tax revenue. So, yeah, I wouldn't feel bad about the short-term rental. Right. Sign and... and you know, and then obviously if you, you know, you, if, 
it does focus, so then you're not like, it's, we have a bar in town, obviously, so maybe you don't want to do the extra tax at the bar. Maybe you do, um, but that sort of thing. But it gives you a chance to say, mm -hmm. maybe you just want to stick with, you know, rooms, you know, tax. So <coughs> anyways, something to think about that we should definitely talk about. I can do a little more research and find out how many short-term rentals we think that we have in Bethel. I give you a better idea and we can, <coughs> something to think about at, um, Budget time. It's set online about 96. Okay, thank you. Just how many? Quickly 96. It, up, it said 96. Mm -hmm. Said about they make about 15 a month, averaging 2.30 a night, 30% occupancy. I don't know, but mm -hmm. quick numbers off. Yeah. Not facts. But it's a. Uh, you know, so it's a revenue source that, yeah, and you can also see, I printed out from the state's website to give you an idea of who also, you know, if you were looking, well, what other towns have done it? Here's the information on who've done it so that you can, you know, you can see that. So that's the local option tax. Um, the hard part for me is if you pick one or one, but not all, you're, you're going to get somebody who's going to say, how come me? Mm. Well, I think in that case, you're, you're, based, you're targeting non-residents <laughs> because a resident's probably not using a short-term rental or, you know. But there might be that poor old guy who's trying to hang on to his property and the only way he can rent keep it is But he's not paying <laughs> for it out of his pocket. He's going to pass that along to the renter. Well, same with the meals and alcohol. Yeah. yeah, no, and it's true. Right, we're talking about which, which would hurt. Yeah, and we're talking about Airbnbs, not regular apartment rentals. Yeah, and, but no, yeah, I'm, and I'm only saying. That, that yeah, no, I'm just. I, saying, I would have a hard time picking one. Yeah, I'm just not saying you have to do it. I'm just saying the state changed their options for you. But we you. can't pick one or the other, can we? You'd have to. You'd vote on it at town meeting. We can right. put them all before the town. But you'd have to. Discuss. There's a couple mm -hmm. of options that you'd have to that do you some bunch together. Yeah. But some research, and then and then there are some things that you can't tax, like right. they don't allow you to tax tobacco or marijuana right. for whatever reason. I don't know why, but and then uh, small things that you can't tax. Chris, you would ask for some information about. Um, Retail, like, uh, remember you asked me for the zip code? I told you I thought I had a zip code yeah. study. So I put that in mm -hmm. your packet. Um, because we did have Arnett and Muldrow do a full um, study as far as Bethel for all. So I did give you some of the market study information. So you could see how much, you know, basically when he calls retail leakage, it's yep. how many people yep. are leaving Bethel, what are they going to go buy, where are they going? And so um, it also gave you like the zip code, and some businesses participated in a zip code study, so it would give you a little information about, you know, who's coming to Bethel to buy stuff, where are they coming from? It's interesting, they said we could stand to have one or two dollar stores. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it, and it was interesting when we met. Right over to Royalton and look at the monster that's going on over there. Yeah, because when we met with Trip, that was one of the things he yeah. said, and we're like, eh, don't say that word, but he, you know, but he said people because people are going to Randolph, people are going right where he said you're losing. There's revenue dollars that would stay in yeah. town. Yeah. Um, so where are you going to put it? Yeah, true, but it was an interesting, you know, concept and. Uh, one of the things he also had said other he had a really successful store in another community uh, i'm not sure if it was in vermont i don't think it was but this guy you kind of went in each people rented a different stall so he kind of was figuring out what was working and what wasn't you know so but yeah so that was part of bethel for all um the other things were changes to open meeting law which are effective July 1st, 2024. Um, and this is gonna affect the select board, the development review board, uh, board of abatement. So basically saying that, um, you know, we need to offer a physical location, uh, obviously, and um, we needed to be able to record the meetings and provide electronic means, so they'd probably start having, DRB might have Zoom meetings now. Um, so BCA will have to have a Zoom link too? Yep. And, and tax and, uh, I think so, yeah. Um, I gave this to Pam to read. 
Um, so you still have to post your meeting. And then it also talked about the law now requires that non-advisory bodies record all meetings in audio, video, in audio or video and post the recording for at least 30 days. So. That means like by uh, human services? Nope. The only ones affected right now are that are considered um, that they're considering under this class is just the select board, just the DRB, and just the board of abatement. It's it not is. everybody else. But they're non. It would be a non-advisory, so it still have to be audioed. Um, because it says, let me see, advisory boards Actually, which do not have supervision, control, or jurisdiction over legislative. <coughs> so you be, you're an advisory board. Yeah. So right now they're saying only non-advisory boards, which are select boards, DRBs, and boards of abatement. Okay. So for the other, you know, um, committees, excuse me, it's fine. But it, so it's just, you know, one more thing. <clears throat> and it also said beginning January 2025, all chairs of legislative bodies, town managers, we're going to have to take an annual open meeting law training. Um, and uh, they had... They had VLCT opposed it and um, is petitioning the Secretary of State that VLCT's training satisfies the requirement. But there's also new website posting requirements of an explanation of the procedures. You know, so there's like a whole, mm -hmm. so that people can, <clears throat> if they feel there's been open meeting law violation, we need to have that on our website. And um, expanding from 10 to 30 days for a municipality to hold a hearing before it holds a meeting using Australian ballot. So it, you know, I don't know. It thinks like they would have bigger fish to fry at, That's exactly in Montpelier, what but, thought was. <clears throat> but what do I know? Um, the other one is tax sale changes. So this is, so <laughs> this requires a taxpayer to be delinquent for longer, a period longer than one year. Um, we have to offer written reasonable repayment plans, which we do anyways. So that's not a big deal. Um, they're changing some of the notifications from, you know, they're extending how many days, you know, notification has to be. Uh, the state is now going to be um, developing a standard um, for translation into five most common non-English languages that we're going to need to send. Um, so it's really just more notice requirements. But the thing that is interesting about this, or no, not interesting, is irritating about this, is they're creating a working group. So it's like, why didn't you do the working group first, get the information, and then create the legislative changes instead? Like, I just got a four or five page survey that someone is putting out from the working group. So I feel like it's kind of cart before the horse. Yeah, it's know. always that way. Um, the other one is the <clears throat> new uniform municipal code of ethics, which VLCT was actually opposed this bill because, you know, it's basically their feeling was that it's basically the state saying that they distrust us. So, <laughs> so here, and um, this is going to be effective January 1st, 2025, and there's going to be Municipal offers, you know, we're going to need to have specific training, and um, so, and, and the House apparently ignored pretty much all of VLCT's input. Do they, do they input. even think about the fact of who serves on these boards? I don't think so. I mean, this is going to become paid full-time jobs. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, <clears throat> what happens, too, is now <clears throat> we have to do, we're going to be uh, all the members of legislative bodies and, and judicial bodies are going to have to take ethics training every three years. Um, they're going to place two former municipal officials on an ethics committee, create a uniform. And, it, and one of the things that I think is interesting here is we have to establish an investigation enforcement ordinance. We're going to have to designate someone to receive complaints. We have There's a whole process, but it, of course it doesn't give us any money to undertake this. So when I say unfunded, unfunded mandate, unfunded this is mandates. what we're looking at. So, because who's got time, you know, I'm certain VLCT will come up with something and, but, you know, it's a whole thing. Um, the other one is 
changes to cannabis regulation. So I already kicked this to the PC because it now is saying that municipalities can establish minimum setback requirements for outdoor grow operations starting January 1st, 2025, which we couldn't do any zoning regulations before for cannabis. Um, now they're saying that um, the setback shall not be larger than 50 feet as established by the municipality. So we need to take, so I already kicked that to the PC and said, you've got until January 2025 to amend the zoning regulations to deal with that, so I gave it to Eric. But um, it's interesting that, you know, with the rules of the state currently, you can't sell cannabis across from the school, but you can grow it. So it's just, it's an interesting thing. So, um, so the P PC will end up talking over this with the DRB and making a change. So that'll cost us a little money to do that. So they were busy doing stuff at the state level. Yeah, they they threw uh, <laughs> school funding away. You know, mm -hmm. we too much. We can't do that. Yeah, you know, it's too much work. Because they were doing this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so I'm sure this isn't everything. Uh, these are just the ones that came up at the end of the legislative review that I was looking at and that came out on a list for things that municipalities need to look at. So I'm, you know, I'm sure there's other things that we mm -hmm. haven't seen yet, but these are the biggies. So local option tax, something to think about, and we'll revisit it towards, you know, budget season. And, so, all right. if you see your, oh, and so Kirk White, I think, is going to be coming in July, so you can save up all your questions for Kirk. <laughs> remind, remind him he should wear his black jacket. Yeah, all right, we will. Get our box of tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anything further on legislative changes? If not, last thing we got here is uh, Babe's Bar Catering. Yep. Met, which we don't have a copy of, but I'm oh, sure I you do. can tell us all about well, it. Well, I got it. Yeah, Pam gave it to me. So a start, so it's July 13th from 6 o'clock to midnight. It's at Babe's Bar. It is, uh, the type of event is the in the parking, it's a parking lot party. Beverages will be limited to a 100 foot by 40 foot section of the parking lot. Barriers will include parked cars and construction fencing. And I think this is something that they this is what they do every year, anyways. Um, so this isn't anything new. But yes, it ended up accidentally in Pam's junk mail, so she retrieved it today. Okay. All right. Just need a motion to approve Babe's Bar Catering Permit. Second. Second. Third. Whatever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Doesn't the DLC have a lot to say about this too? <clears throat> oh yeah, once they, because it goes to the, excuse me, liquor control, and then they, yeah, they're the ones who are the ultimate authority about it. And okay, all in favor? Because they have to follow the DLC rules about fencing and what's appropriate. All in, all in favor? Okay, I just have it. And town manager's report. So Paul had emailed and asked about um, how the reappraisal was going, sorry. And so I emailed Al Coonrod, he's the gentleman doing it. And he said, um, I've not yet started on your commercial database, but am well over halfway done with parcel inspections. 948 as of today out of 1,267. Not sure if our contract includes non-tax parcels, but I do them as a rule, and it becomes up to the listers or assessor whether or not to use them. And then he just went on to say, it took me more than an hour to sketch the elementary middle school today because there was none on file. Uh, as to interior inspections, between finding people at home and appointments, we're pretty typical in Bethel at this point, as some are over 35%. It's lessened a bit over the years with the incidence of COVID and our use of OPVD cards allowing folks to confirm interior data online. And um, so he's saying pretty much it's been obviously just up to him. And, um, but he's, you know, he's already got well over halfway done of the parcel. So it seems to be going 
going along. Who does the inputting to release the files that you can view with the code numbers that they give you? Because I went on mine again, it's been well over three weeks and I still can't get into the... They do. That's something that Nemrick does. Okay. So I'm surprised, I don't know why, because um, yeah, I had somebody check. else. And um, well, you know what, just have, uh, if you give the office a buzz, either Penny or Kelly could send Al an email yeah, and sure. ask him about it. Because usually I, uh, people have been pretty quick the turnaround. I haven't heard any you know, issues with it. Um, so I, th I think in your packet, I, did I provide you with a one page um, education on government employees in the First Amendment? Yep. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah. All right, so that's, you know, some information that we gathered from the employment attorney and kind of let you guys know, I've shared it around, had people edit it, sent it to um, Gary Kugler, so the interim fire chief, and um, it'll be something that goes into our personnel policy moving forward is just kind of let people know. I think that's where it gets a little gray. It's, it's different if you're working for a private employer versus you know a, a municipal employer. So hopefully that provided some information. Um, we did, we're receiving another FEMA payment of 198,000. I still have four projects they haven't obligated from July, but um, aside from giving them a pint of blood, I think I've given them everything that they wanted. I did three site inspections with FEMA last week, um, and uh, the RFP for engineering has been issued for Sugar Hill culvert. So, and we did have three engineering firms attend, which was great. I was really happy about that. Um, and then I'm just updating you on my vacation schedule that I will be away. Um, and I'll reach out to Gary Kugler about um, being the EMD um, while I'm gone. How about Sand Hill? Any updates on the nope. storm drain project? Oh, the storm project. Storm I project. believe, yeah, I'm hoping it goes out to bid this week. Okay. So I was talking to Mike Maynard, the engineer there, and he's like, look, it's ready to go. Let's put it out to bid. We joked about putting it out to bid while the other engineer's on vacation. <laughs> and um, so we'll see what the pricing is. Basically, yeah. that's what it's going to come down to. If it comes in, and it's decent because somebody's got a hole and they're looking for work, then, um, then maybe we go through with it this year. If not, it will be in the spring. And we'll rebid it again later. It's just all going to depend on the money. Uh, the good news was the um, on-site overseer engineer titled Bob Moulton has uh, told me that he had put the note into the office and I reminded them that he'd like to come back and oversee that work since, as he called it, I dug one hell of a test pit, he said, up Sand Hill. So he says, I feel like I know where everything is now. So, um, so we'll see what happens, hopefully. Nice could wrap that up. Yeah, it would be very nice, but you know, it's, this is just what happens. We still are gonna have some straggling with the water project because while the railroad cashed our check very quickly, uh, we've had no response from them. So. Aldridge and Elliott's been reaching out to them, and if I don't, if we don't hear back from anything after the <coughs> fourth, I'm probably gonna have to have the town attorney send them a letter. So the directional boring, the project could finish, and my guess is the directional boring will be after Hebert's left town, they'll have to come back. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I would drill a hole. That's just a process, so it's we're get, getting through that. Uh, and that's, that's it for me. Okay. And we had the select board meeting minutes from the 10th of June. Anything to change or are we good to approve as written? Motion to approve as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. So you got some stuff in there from the Windsor County Sheriff. Mm -hmm. Conservation. Then, yep. Great committee. Right. Um, O2 
Oh, Julie, I was going to ask you, is if, um, if you can't get the minutes to me tomorrow, if you could just send them to Kelly, she can put them out as a draft, just because I'm going to be out of the office Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday. So there you can send them to both. Um, yeah, and then we'll see who's around. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other business to come before the board? Hearing none, uh, I'm just going to, which one do you want to do first in an executive session? Or um, you could just do it all and then I'll leave. I'll do two personal matters and I'll leave for the okay. town manager evaluation. We have the, uh, just need a motion to enter executive session to discuss the evaluation of the town manager as well as two other personnel matters. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Right. 